Hey everybody, welcome to my channel and to today's video. Happy Memorial Day weekend to you guys. You're seeing this video either on Sunday or on Memorial Day. I don't know which day it's gonna go up. Haven't decided yet, but I have another palette video for you. Now, I know you're just like, where do you come up with all these ideas? Well, I don't know. Sometimes you just have to think outside of the box. So today what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be talking about palette themes or palette color stories that most match their theme, that really epitomize the theming of the palette. So the color story is very reminiscent of the theme in terms of like the colors that it represents. Does it represent the theme well? Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Um, I think I'm explaining myself correctly, but yeah. So, of course you know I love eyeshadow palettes because my name is Amy and this is Dolly Mama Beauty and that's what we talk about a lot on this channel. I mean, eyeshadow palettes are my favorite thing ever. Um, I pretty much love makeup in general. I mean, you can tell I love color. I'm, I'm an old bat. <laughs> I'm 51 years old, but I don't play by the rules. I wear color. I do my own thing, and so should you. So don't be afraid to try something new. Don't be afraid to step outside of the box and try something that is new to you, especially color, because you can wear it too. I promise you. So hope you guys are going to enjoy today's video. I do drugstore content as well. I do hauls. Um, and I talk a lot about eyeshadow palettes. So I have a haul coming up. I just have to wait for everything to get here. <laughs> and it's gonna take till like after the weekend to get here. So in the meantime, we are filming the video today about palettes, palette color stories that most represent the theme. Okay. And I'm super excited. Okay, so make sure you like this video. Like this video. Just give me a thumbs up, click it real quick. And also, please subscribe if you haven't yet already. If you're new here, join the DMB crew. It's free, the notification bell. You can do all three at once. And it's simple, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, like my yellow shirt, yeah. So anyway, I'm so excited. And um, join the DMB crew today. And if you're a returning viewer, thanks for coming back and watching today's video. Also, one last thing, if you guys wouldn't mind watching this all the way through, it does help with my watch time, it does help the algorithm, so it would really help me out if you could watch it all the way through. You can watch it in the background if you can't watch it right now, or you can save it and watch it later. Either way, I would be happy to have you guys watch this video all the way through. Let's get started. Okay, the first one is the best execution of a theme I've ever seen in a palette. Hands down the best execution I've ever seen of a theme in this pal in, in, in a palette. That is the Star Wars Color Pop palette, the Color Pop palette with Star Wars. This theme, this color story is everything. Look, there is the 1977 poster. That is the poster. Look at the color story. Okay, you guys. Listen, if you don't know anything about Star Wars, let me give you a short lesson. There is the Force. There's the good side of the Force, the bad side of the Force. The Force is, um, you know, it's balanced both ways, you know, and uh, yeah. So the blue represents the Jedi, and those are the good um, people of the Force. And then the red represents the Sith which are the bad people in the force. So you've got good versus bad. You've got the neutrals in here that really do represent some of the earthier tones of say Tatooine or Endor. You don't have any green in here, but you have some really cool galactic shades. Um, you've got this swirly shade and this swirly shade down here. You've got some deep tones to represent space. You've got some metallics to represent the droids. Guys, when I tell you this is the best execution, ever of a theme, I can't think of anything that executed a theme better than this. I really can't. I have some good palettes here, but this one is spot on, 1000% accurate. I can't even begin to tell you. This, this, when this came out, I was like stunned at how accurate and how good it was. Like, I couldn't believe it. So here you go. This is the Star Wars palette with ColourPop. This palette is always out of stock. I do not know if they're gonna restock it. I will say right now, ColourPop is having a Memorial Day sale. So when you're watching this, their sale is still going on. I can guarantee you that because it will run through Monday. 
So if you see this and it's on sale and it's available, I would get it because it's so good. Um, I will also say that the Twilight palette that they released is very on theme as well. So I do not have that palette, bane of my existence. But anyway, I might try to get it. We'll see. I have to find out where my budget stands for the month already because I might be over budget. But Star Wars palette from ColourPop. Okay, so... To me, Nomad kills their um, color stories every single time, regardless of where they go. Um, but one palette to me, there's two palettes that they have that stand out in particular, um, but I wanted to only mention one Nomad palette today. Um, and the Nomad palette that I'm going to mention in today's video is the Nomad Ireland Wild Atlantic Way palette. This one and the Hudson Valley, to me, are the Nomad palettes that most epitomize their location. Um, if you open this, if you have this, you know what I'm talking about. The lush greens of Ireland and the cliffs and the and the and you know you have salt water, you have some of that um, those rusty tones too, um, and the golds. It is very much Ireland. Now people do not know this maybe, but Everybody associates green with Ireland, but the Irish flag is green, white, and orange. So you've got the orange tones in here as well, and you've got some blues in here to kind of represent that coastline. And I just think that, you know, if you look at the um, image on the box, which I kept because truthfully, this is a beautiful box. Now, all the boxes that Nomad's palettes come in are absolutely stunning, but this one I just loved because I want to go there so badly, okay? I am Irish by heritage. That's part of my um, my my ethnic background. So I'm I'm always in been intrigued by Ireland, and um, yeah, I love 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 the Ireland Wild Atlantic Way palette by Nomad. I do keep it in its box because it's so pretty, and I don't like the um, carpet packaging, so that's why I keep it in its box. I should have done that with my Orient Express palette, but I didn't. Okay. All right, now, where ColourPop didn't succeed for me, um, BH Cosmetics did with their Italy palette, the Amor and Amalfi palette. This one right here, this represents the Amalfi Coast of Italy, very reminiscent of the Limoncello palette. You will see some of the similar tones, but this is absolutely gorgeous. You have the Limoncello uh, shades down here, which is great. You don't have any blue in here or green, but really to me, like, you know, iron colors, you know, the dirty, you know, um, rocky shades, um, the golds, the sunsets there. I'm telling you, like, if you look at the picture on the front, that's the Amalfi Coast. Of course, you have that, that little line of blue sky, but it really is like a rosy, bricky, brown, orange, and yellowy landscape. So it really does lend itself to this color story. So I thought this one was spot on. There are a lot of BH 16 pound palettes that are spot on. I have another one in this video, you'll see it soon. But this one to me is underrated. And so I swear to God, like I can't even begin to tell you my level of just absolute heartbreak because of this brand. This brand was on such a roll. They were on such a roll and then it just all fell apart for them. And I just still have never to this day been able to get over it. <laughs> but the Amor and Amalfi, I've never been to the Amalfi Coast. I've been to Italy about four times, but never to the Amalfi Coast. I did live in Europe for a time and I was able to get to Italy, but really only to Venice um, because it was too far. I would have had to fly to Italy versus taking the train or driving. And it would have been, uh, I wouldn't have had enough time in like Rome or, or um, you know, any of those other places like Florence or, or any of that stuff. So I never got to visit those, but I want to go to the Amalfi Coast. It's, it's definitely on my bucket list. Okay. Now I'm awaiting a palette from this brand that is spot on with its theming. But this is also spot on with it seeming. This is the Wicked Widow Graveyard Smash Palette. This was gifted to me by my friend Amanda. Happy birthday to Amanda. Amanda is the owner of Ladybug Glow. Today is her birthday. She is a friend of mine. 
and she so generously gifted me um, this palette. And I just was so over the moon to receive it. It was my first time trying the brand, the Graveyard Smash. This is so, 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 so Halloween. You've got the purple, you've got the green, and you've got the orange. And you've got some complimentary shimmers to go with them. I am so thankful that this shade is a matte because you really can use it with all of the shades in here. Um, you've got, you know, that kind of dirty, you know, dirty gold. Um, you've got this other green. Um, the mattes are really what epitomize this palette for me. I love this brand. I'm so excited for their newest release. Spoiler alert, I did get it and I cannot wait. It's the Crow palette. You guys, if you haven't seen other people talking about that yet, Wicked Widow just had a new release and it sold out, I believe. And I'm super excited about it. And as soon as I saw it, and as soon as I saw that they paid honor to Brandon Lee, who is the rightful and only person who should play Eric Draven. Sorry, Bill Sarsgaard. Um, you're awesome and everything, but you should never have agreed to make a remake of that movie. I'm so mad about it. Okay, so there's that. That's a great, great smash. I'm super excited. Okay, so this palette from Odin's Eye. Mm, I love Odin's Eye. Odin's Eye is a brand that always comes through no matter what they do. But this color story in particular was so on point, as was the palette that came out with it. But this one to me is the is the true winner in terms of its color story for the theming. This is the Merry Christmas palette from Odin's Eye. This was a limited edition palette, was released two years ago, sold out immediately. They did re-release it last Christmas and it's already, you can't get it anymore. I don't know if they'll do it for a third year in a row, but if they, if you don't get it on the third pass, then I have no, I have no uh, nothing to say to you because anyway, let's look at this palette. Okay, so this is the Christmas morning palette. I think this is a Christmas palette done right. You've got all the pretty rich shades of Christmas, those rich greens, the golds, the coppers, the reds, um, and you really have a lot of variety in here. And I do really, really think of this as a Christmas palette. When I open this one, oh, that's so Christmassy. Like, you look at something and you say, and it's similar, similarly to Angie's palette, the Trick or Treat. That was going to be another one that I mentioned, but I decided I had some other palettes I had to mention in this video. But this one in particular for me is the most on point with its theme. And what I like about these greens versus the Ireland Wild Atlantic Way, these greens are all so different. The Ireland Wild Atlantic Way, I feel like the greens are different. They have a little bit of a different undertone, but they can look a little redundant on the eyes, whereas these look all different on the eyes. You're not going to get one green that looks the same. They're all great. And a lot of them are cool greens. You have some dirty greens in here, and then you have some cooler greens as well that are more like a teal leaning green. Um, it, it pairs really, really well with um, the, all the shades pair really well. A lot of people say this is, this is one palette and this is one palette. No, I wear all the shades all the time, all together, because that's how I roll. In case you didn't know, um, yeah. So we're halfway through. So let me tell you what is on my eyes today. Let me get that palette so I can show you what is on my eyes. This palette is not in today's video um, as one of my 10 palettes where the theme best represents the palette or the color story best represents the theme. I do want to tell you this is was featured in my last video which if you didn't see it it was my top 10 color stories of all time. This video this palette was featured in that. This is the Haunted palette. This is from Gourmand Girls and Doodles by the Bunny. I wanted to give a shout out to my friend Christina who is the owner of Gourmand Girls and who I'm also who I who I love very very much. She and Amanda are best friends and the three of us have become quite close. So I wanted to wear that palette today on my eyes uh, in honor of Amanda. So she sent me the Graveyard Smash palette and Christina, her best friend, and um, Doodles by the Bunny created this. And so this is what is on my eyes today. Yeah, I love, love, love this palette. That's one of the best color stories ever. Obviously, I featured it in my last video. Okay, so we are five down, five to go. All right, we're going back to ColourPop. Now, ColourPop really does have a lock on the Star Wars palettes that they've released, with the exception of one palette that I think missed the mark, and that was the Darth Vader palette. The Darth Vader palette did miss the mark, 
but if you have the Darth Vader palette and the Star Wars palette, you can use them together to get that quintessential Darth Vader look. But one of them that they nailed, like hardcore nailed, was the Child palette. This, what happened to this show? Okay, what, what's going on with Star Wars, you guys? Um, I'm starting to lose hope for the future of Star Wars. I don't know what's happening because Lord have mercy, some of this content that they're putting out is n not good. Um, I loved this show's first season and their second season. The third season I did not like, um, but that's because Dave Filoni and John Favreau were not involved. And I think because they also got rid of, um, what's her name? Oh, Gina Carano, who was one of the best characters on the show. It, it just hurt the show. And there was too much going on in Mandalorian season three. Okay, I'm getting off topic. But anyway, here's the child palette. Let me open it for you. This is Grogu and Yoda. This is Yoda's and Grogu's species right here. The outfit, his little, his little brown robe, his skin, or his, um, his little brown robe, his, um, his uh, skin, um, all the colors. I mean, you have all these greens here. Also unique greens. These are a little similar for my liking, but one is a sequin finish, one is a matte. Um, but, you know, there are there is a differentiation. You have a great brown in here to really, you know, the, the, the thing about, um, the thing about Yoda, you know, he has his little walking stick and it's brown. It looks like a piece of wood. So, I mean, when I look at this, I mean, it's undeniably Yoda and Grogu. I have to mention Yoda because Yoda, Yoda came before Grogu. Grogu obviously is force sensitive. I think he was alive during the Order 66 and he was able to get out and survive. And that is why um, Moff Gideon wants him <laughs> and all this other stuff. Anyway, I, I, I'm getting off topic again. I could talk about Star Wars. That's a whole nother topic, but... This color story, really truthfully, is one of the best they've ever done. Very, very on trend with the theme. I like the Mandalorian palette too, um, and I think it's really, really good, but I didn't mention it in this video. The C3PO palette is also good. I do not have that one. Okay, now let's get to the other BH Cosmetics palette that I really think nailed the theme. One of my great, one of my favorite palettes of all time. I did not mention this in the color story, but it was a near miss, like, I, I could have concluded it in this that video too. It's the avocado toast. When I tell you, you have every level of ripeness in a avocado here. You have the pit. You have the um, creaminess of the toast. Like you have a buttery shade. You have some brown shades to represent the toast. I, I just can't even begin to tell you I hate this background. Please, brands, no more metallic backgrounds. God bless. Thank you. This is such a good palette. It executes the avocado toast theme so well. You have avocados that, you know, are really, really green. You have avocados that are a little bit more mossy. You have this avocado skin when it's really, really ripe. Then you have it when it gets a little brown. Then you got the pits right there. Uh, oh, my God. This one really nailed the theme. The blueberry muffin's good too, but I think there's it's too cool toned and there's not enough neutrals in there for it to constitute it being a muffin palette. But I like that color story as well, but I didn't think they executed the blueberry muffin palette nearly as well as they executed the avocado toast. So definitely, definitely a good one. Okay, going back to Halloween, okay. This palette even more than the Graveyard Smash, is a Halloween palette if I ever saw one. The person who created it is definitely a spooky season gal. That is Betty Jean and Trout Cosmetics with the Halloween palette. Guys, I love the It's Freaking Bats more, but if you ever wanted a Halloween palette that had the Halloween colors, excuse me, this is the hollow, most Halloween-y palette you're going to ever get. Halloween instead of Halloween. Hello. I, this one's self-explanatory. Um, you've got this deep, witchy green. You've got a lighter green. Uh, you know, and then you've got this really pretty blue, bluey purple. It's a really deep navy, but it's a 
a tad purple as well, kind of a midnight blue shade. The oranges, the only thing I don't like about this palette is that these two are very similar. This one is deeper and this one is lighter, but all in all, I mean, purple green, you got the black claim um, multi-chrome or duochrome. And the names in and of itself, Woodsboro, Losers Club. I mean, you got, it's so funny how much I know about horror movies, but I don't watch them. Anyway, Halloween, I could make all the references in here I know. Um, Crypt, yeah, Black Flame, It's Showtime, yeah, I know them all. Okay, now this one, you have to be a gamer or have to have played perhaps World of Warcraft to get this one, but I knew it immediately and of all their palettes, this one to me is so spot on so spot on it's in the palette cover it's in the game and it is the druid palette from fantasy cosmetica so if you have ever played world of warcraft and i have i played for a while uh, prior to having delilah and then when i was on maternity leave but then once i went back to work i couldn't play anymore but this is the druid palette so one of the druids um abilities was that they could change into a bear and the druids lived in, oh God, what was the name of the place in World of Warcraft? Well, anyway, they all, they came from this place that had all these trees and it was greens and browns and, you know, you know, these, these, um, maroony shades, um, and the, you know, these yucky greens. And I swear, if I go back into my brain and I look at their starting levels, and where they are, the Druid's um, base is. What the hell is the name of it? If I think of it, I'll put it on the screen, okay? I'll have to look it up and, and put it later editing. Amy will have to put the name of it here. And I'll put try to put a picture of what a Druid looks like. But the, I would go around in bear form. I would be in cat form. And I would be in stealthy cat form. But I, the, there, was, there was a bear form too. This one represents it so, so well. This is definitely accurate for the Druid. Last but certainly not least, this palette's name says it all and the color story matches it perfectly. This is the Sultry palette from ABH. Um, a timeless classic that should be permanent and why it is not, I will never understand. Maybe they need to re, they, they did the small Sultry. I'm like, why would you do that? Just give us this one again, <laughs> please and thank you. I already have it, I use it. It's elegant. That's it. It's sultry. Um, whenever you want a glam look, a sultry look, where, where else are you going to look other than the sultry palette? It, 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 the name says it all. The color story says it all. It's absolutely breathtaking, and it's one of my favorite neutral palettes in my collection. So these 10 palettes right here, y'all, these 10 palettes okay, are for sure, for sure, palettes that most represent their theming. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, do be sure to give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet subscribed already, please do so now. Please do so now. Now, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, I want you to leave me an avocado, okay? That is the emoji of the day, is the avocado, because who doesn't love avocado toast? I like avocados, but I really would never ever said I was an avocado toast person, but yeah, avocados are everything. So that's the emoji for today is an avocado. So thank you for watching all the way to the end for those of you that do, and um, you guys are the best. So Borja Finger Hearts, I purple you, and I love you so, so much. So remember, you know, it's the weekend, you know, we're kind of coming toward the end of the weekend, and it's been a three-day weekend, so I hope you took that time to celebrate those who came before us to honor um honor all of the soldiers that have come before you and laid the groundwork for our peace and freedom so that we could live in harmony um because if you didn't know this it's memorial day and a lot of people don't understand sometimes what memorial day is a lot of people do and a lot of people don't they get that and veterans say confused what you can't do because Memorial Day is for, or for service members that passed away. Veterans Day is for service members that are still living. Okay, so 
there you go. So remember, you have had a three-day weekend. If you're lucky, not everybody does. I get it. I understand. I hope you recharged. I hope you filled your cup. I hope you spent time with your family that you loved on one another. You know, my daughter. Anyway, she's not doing so well. I had to shave her head yesterday. That you filled your cup, okay? So now that you have all of that positive energy, that rested spirit, that you go out into the world being a kind person, using that restful spirit and that energy and that positive energy to love others as Jesus has loved you because, because we all want to treat others as we want to be treated because that is the golden rule, rule and that is what is most important. So, yes, I, Borje, I love you. God bless you and may the force be with you and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.